The man, the myth, the master of fire and light. Controversial musician and filmmaker Steve Taylor has enjoyed enormous success in the world of Christian entertainment. From his years of prosperity as a popular solo artist, to his years of prosperity as a popular producer and record executive, Steve Taylor does more in nearly 20 years of show business than most men do all day. Yet, as with any dreamer, there remains a portion of the dream untouched by the nimble hands of talent and fate. Roland Stephen Taylor was born in Brawley, California on the 9th of December, 1957. When he was only seven years old, Excuse me, Steve Eric? enjoyed the... Yes? Hey, hey, Eric, can you hear me? It's Clay in the control room. <laughs> yes. Hi, Clay. Hey, look, you're doing a great job, all right? But the producers need you to speed things up a little bit. All right, you look. I'm a professional voiceover artist. I'm not an editor. I have no idea what to cut out. Trust me, just let the video editors worry about the rest. Those guys are pros at fixing other people's mistakes. Alright, so why don't we just skip to the first album? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> During his senior year at London's prestigious School of Hard Knocks, Steve Taylor recorded rough demos of four songs that would eventually comprise the bulk of his first record, I want to be a clone. The six-song EP was peppered with such colorful and thought-provoking titles as Whatever Happened to Sin and What You Gonna Do When Your Number's Up. Almost overnight, Steve's powerful songs caught the attention of the entire Christian music community. Creating a signature is what an artist has to do to make it in this world today. And I, I think when you look at the song, Walk This Way, and then on top of that, you throw in the scarf on the microphone, uh, it's me, undeniable sir. that... Uh, Mr. Breeden, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I, I think that you are talking about Steven Tyler from, from Aerosmith. Aerosmith, yeah. Steve right. Tyler. Okay, but but I thought I would make it clear we were talking about Steve Taylor. Steve Taylor. A Steve Taylor. contemporary Christian artist. Uh, never heard of him. Steve Taylor's impact on Christian music was undeniable. Within a year, sales of I Want to Be a Clone catapulted into the hundreds of dozens. This success prompted Steve's record company to commission the production of a full-length album. After several months in the studio, Steve emerged with Meltdown, an album regarded by many fans and critics as Steve's second album. Released in 1984, Meltdown was an enormous success, especially in Germany, where people are more easily impressed. 1984 also marked Taylor's first foray into the world of professional filmmaking, a dream the musician had harbored since his carefree days at the School of Hard Knocks. As a filmmaker, Taylor found immediate success for his first music video, the young director was able to secure a cameo from Lisa Welchel, one of television's hottest young starlets. Well, obviously everybody wanted Tootie. Tootie? Yeah, uh, Tootie. And uh, she wasn't available, and that's filmmaking. you got to compromise. You know, you take the good, you, you take the bad. You take them both, and there you have it. These are the facts of life. As factual as life may have been for Steve Taylor, it would not always be this easy. Despite his charismatic public persona, Taylor had always gone to great lengths to maintain his privacy. However, during his 1987 North American tour, Taylor was finally forced to tell the world about his deepest, darkest secret. I struggle with I struggle with severe inner ear infections. I've been dealing with this privately for a long time. Uh, losing one's balance can be a really devastating experience. And I just hope that by sharing my private struggles that I can help people who have to deal on a regular basis with this terrible, terrible condition. That took a lot of courage, Mr. Taylor. I thank you personally. Thank you.
After making the brave choice to confront his terrible condition publicly, Taylor made the even braver choice of joining a secular rock band and signing with MCA Records. In 1991, Chagall Guevara released their self-titled debut and received a glowing review from Rolling Stone magazine. More mainstream praise would soon follow, but not for the members of Chagall Guevara who went their separate ways minutes after the Rolling Stone review hit newsstands. MCA representatives insisted that Chagall Guevara's split was amicable. However, footage recently unearthed reveals that the band had endured serious turmoil long before their official breakup. All right, who's been spreading all these rumors about us? They're not rumors, Zach. Unfortunately, it's all true. Now, what happens in the group should stay in the group. There is no group. Not since she came along. Oh, you're wrong. She is the best thing that ever happened to me. Well, I thought I was. Pipe down, Screech. People, we have a concert in five minutes. Let's discuss it later. No, 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 no. Forget later, Brian. I want to know who gave this interview. That's beside the point, Zach. The fact is, you sold out, man. Is that what you all think? You've changed, Zach. She's right. Well, if that's how you all think, there's only one thing to do. I quit. What? Let's see how good you do without me. Steve's future looked darker than ever. In 1996, life would become much sweeter for Steve Taylor. It was in this year that Taylor not only founded a penny on the sidewalk, but also founded Squint Entertainment a unique film and music company that would cater to the needs of artists, in addition to catering small parties and business meetings whenever record sales became sluggish. Over the past four years, Squint Entertainment has achieved remarkable success. Much of this success can be attributed to Squint's flagship musical act, Sixpence None the Richer. In 1998, Sixpence's infectious tribute to young love, The Thong Song, became a top 10 hit in exactly one gazillion countries. However, Sixpence's recording would not be the thong song's swan song. In the spring of 2000, platinum-haired R&B artist Sisko went platinum with the cover of the recent classic, although his raunchy version stood in stark contrast to the wide-eyed innocence of the Sixpence original. Like many of the artists who have worked with Steve Taylor, the members of Sixpence None the Richer are avid fans of his music. Honestly, I'd never heard of the guy uh, until we signed with Squint, and Matt played me some of the previous albums, and man, there is some great material on those, like Walk This Way, okay, now stop, such stop. a great... Mrs. Nash, please, it is very, very simple, okay? Steve Tyler equals Aerosmith. Steve Taylor equals the conversation we're supposed to be having. I mean, come on, haven't you heard of I Want to Be a Clone? Steve Taylor, oh, yes, yes. I Want to Be a Clone, sure. What a great song. Dude, I'm sorry. I knew he looked familiar. For more than 20 years, Steve Taylor's adventurous spirit has influenced every aspect of his professional career. However, with the formation of Squint Entertainment, Taylor has finally discovered an occupation that satisfies his diverse interests. Goodbye. 